There's a brief disclaimer for this morning. There are two naughty words in the talk. John, cover your ears. Um, They're mildly naughty, so I don't think they should take anyone too offensive, but prepare yourselves accordingly. The talk is called There's a Reason. There's a reason. So, wrestling. So many times I find myself wrestling with the talks. And it's good. Wrestling is good. It's what Jacob did with the angel. It's what Vincent van Gogh did with his demons. It's what Brother Francesco did with his commitment. It's what Jonathan Livingston did with the air. So, there are many great wisdom teachers who wrestled, and it's something of an honor to be in their company. So often I know there's something important to be conveyed, something to be shared, and I wrestle with the words and the concepts until finally I surrender. And wouldn't you think that after a while I would learn to surrender just a little bit earlier than when I get exhausted and frustrated? And I I came up with a topic for another talk. The topic for the talk is, why does it take us so darn long to learn stuff? I may come up with an acronym or something to shorten it. But, um, but it's no surprise that there is a reason would be a formidable topic to wrestle with. It's a formidable opponent. Because what the heck is the reason for me? Like, why am I here? Am I really essential? Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing to earn my space? Are these questions even relevant And then what inevitably happens is, oh, it's time for cookies, and I'm going to go watch Lost on Netflix. I'll see you later. And and that's like, that's how this has been going. (laughs) So the word reason is going to be played with a little bit today. My very good friend and I were chatting about this because she was challenged by the word reason. What do you mean when you say there's a reason? What are you saying? And I threw out this example sort of a way to see it from two different perspectives. And for the moment, I'm going to use language. This isn't where the naughty language is. But um, I'm going to use language that I don't normally use just for the sake of this example. Um, Because normally I don't talk about owning a disease, but I'm just using it as in this example. So this is the first sentence. There's a reason you got cancer. And this is the second sentence. You got cancer for a reason. It's subtle. It's subtle. Are you, can you feel it? Because I'll get there, but just, okay. Because so the first statement, there's a reason you got cancer, for me, is heavy with judgment. You are experiencing cancer because of something that you did. There's a reason you got cancer. You did this, and you got cancer because of it. Your action caused this result. The second to me is filled with opportunity. You got cancer for a reason. Your body is letting you know something and it's time for you to learn. There's an opportunity, there's a journey of awakening happening here. Now, granted, it's a stretch. But I'm willing to take that stretch because I believe that every moment of our lives reveals itself for a reason, for a purpose. I'm going to let Dorothy Parker start us off. Dorothy Parker quoted as, well, what fresh hell is this? So why is this happening? Many of us have said this before about happenings or occurrences in our own lives or in the world around us. Sometimes we add the to me at the end of it. Why is this happening to me? Generally, though, when our lives start feeling like a 1970s disaster movie, we tend to look up and say, seriously? Why? There was a teacher that came through Anchorage several years ago, and she introduced me to what she called the helicopter perspective. This is different from the story of the guy who was in the flood who was waiting, and he got the helicopter, and he missed it. A little different. This is um, an idea of looking at a current life situation as if we were in a helicopter, looking down on it. Like as an example, there have been times in my life when I felt like I was in a dryer. 
getting tossed around, getting twirled, no control over what was happening. Stuff was just happening to me. And I was just spinning through all of it and, and freaking out. And during it, I would be crying out, seriously, why is this happening? What is going on? And then after it was all over, I could look back and say, oh, oh, that's why that happened. The helicopter perspective allows us to access that kind of wisdom during the experience. So while I'm in the dryer, I can actually take myself mentally out and see from above what exactly is unfolding and how it is unfolding and sometimes even why it is unfolding. So imagine if you could see a maze from a helicopter. You would look down and go, oh, that's easy. I just do here and here and then I go there and then I'm through. So it's this idea that if we could see the, trip, the tricks and the traps and where we get stumbled and where we get stuck, we would totally know how to navigate it better. That's the idea of the helicopter perspective. So from this perspective, everything makes a whole lot more sense. So when I look at my life up till now, from the helicopter, I can see there were no accidents, there were no mistakes, there was no event that was not supposed to happen exactly as it did. There was a reason for everything, even the things that caused me great pain. So recently on Facebook, I, I posted this picture, and I've actually used it in a talk before, but it really seemed to, to play out recently. God gives us only what we can handle. Apparently, God thinks I'm a badass. <laughs> did you, did you? And that was shared. I started out writing this talk with great ambition. I was going to uh, deal with the reason for us and the reason for everything and the reason for all things that happen everywhere. And boy, was that a rabbit hole. And <laughs> fortunately, I climbed back out in time. It just didn't work. So we're just going to look at the reason for us, the reason we're here. That seems like a reasonable place to start. So there's a tricky part of this idea that there's a reason for us because we can easily get diverted into ego. You know, well, of course there's a reason for me. I am exceptionally important. I am essential. You know, and the thing is, that's true. And there's no need to be a jerk about it. You know, it's like you can, you can stand up and say that and, and still be likable. But this is what I've learned is that God or universe or whatever name we're using, this creator of things, created this magnificent cosmic jigsaw puzzle that is everything. And it's awesome in the truest sense of that word. Now, do any of you guys do jigsaw puzzles? Jigsaw puzzles? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Once in a while. All right. So have you ever arrived at the end of assembling a jigsaw puzzle and you discover that one piece is missing? The, the dog ate it. This is crazy making for those of us who have just a slight touch of OCD. Because it's kind of like when you paint your wall and there's one spot that just didn't go well. And no matter how many people tell you how beautiful the wall is, you look at that wall, you see that one spot. This is how the creator feels when it looks at this awesome cosmic puzzle and there's a piece missing. And it's us. It's us. It matters. And so there's this basic idea that creator, God, universe, all, did not put any of us here by accident or for no reason. Everything, everything that was created naturally is here for a purpose. Even the warthog, even the platypus, and even, yes, mosquitoes. I'm working out that one. I'm, I'm working through that one. I'll get back to you after this one on my toe heels. So it's just like Marianne Williamson teaches us. Who are we to think that there isn't a reason for us? Who are we to think 
that it's okay for us not to shine. Right, great, got it. Thank you, Rev. Rachel. I'll see you later. Have a great day. <laughs> Except that why does crap keep happening in my life then if there's a reason for me, if, there's, if I'm here for a purpose, if God created this awesome jigsaw puzzle and I'm a piece of it, why does stuff keep happening to me? It's because, well, there's many reasons, but mostly it's because the universe has a wicked sense of humor. I know that when one door closes, another always opens, but man, these hallways are a bit. <laughs> the universe has a great sense of humor, and sometimes we don't get the joke. Dan Millman calls this experience we're having Earth School. And some, for some people, Earth School could be sitting in the back row, drawing doodles of themselves as lead singers of their favorite band, or, you know, I love so-and-so. You know, whatever we want to doodle in the back of the room. But the real reason that we are in Earth School is we're here to learn. We're here to remember. We're here to remember what we already know. We're here to be reminded of the truth of who we really are. So just for a moment, remember what it was like to be young. Remember being a seven or eight year old soul who had great dreams of what they were going to be when they grew up. And if you didn't have that experience, I invite you to imagine what it would be like to be totally open open to what life has to offer. And just breathe that in for a minute. Seven years old on the playground, I'm going to be a flight attendant. I'm going to be a ballerina. I'm going to be a surgeon. I'm going to be a firefighter. So without any judgment, I ask this question of you and me. What happened? What happened? Some people say that we're born predestined. Our purpose is already set. James Hilden, in the book The Soul's Code, speaks about this. He says that we come into the world like acorns. Acorns have the whole oak tree already in them. And he says that that's how we come into this world. Everything's already contained. So when Frances Gum was born, she was already predestined to be Judy Garland. That when Nelson Mandela came into this world, his path was already set for him. There's a part of this that I like. I like that you know, we came in with a, a destiny planned. However, I also like the idea that we are able to choose. I don't like that we're you know, set on like those, those uh, amusement park cars that are on a rail and you can't steer. You're just stuck. And so then the rabbit hole goes deeper because then we think, well, what if our ability to choose is just part of our preordained destiny? What if every choice we make was already made? Trust me, hours, hours, lost. <laughs> and then cookies and lost on Netflix, and it was, yeah, it was bad, it was bad. So the thing is, many of us know that feeling that comes to us when we suddenly are doing what we're here to do. Yeah? When we're living our purpose. When we're not only listening to that inner voice, but we're actually doing what it's telling us to do. Some of the greatest teachers and guides and spiritual role models have done this. They've heard, they've listened, and they've acted upon what they knew to be the voice of spirit guiding them. And some of them did this knowing that there would be great suffering and hardship and sacrifice. Yeshua, the great teacher, also known as Jesus. Great example. Brother Francesco, again, heard this voice. It was against everything that he was being taught, but he knew he had to do it. Vincent van Gogh, he actually wanted to be a pastor. Painting was a side hobby. But because that path was not opening for him, he started to paint. Was that predestined? 
that he needed to do that? I don't know. Mother Teresa heard the call, went. Now it's being revealed that she didn't really like it. She wasn't really happy. But she did it because it was her purpose. She was called. Beethoven, Joan of Arc, Mahatma Gandhi, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the woman in Liberia who coordinated this women's protest when they said, enough is enough, we want peace. And she won the Nobel Peace Prize for it. They heard spirit call them and they said, yes. And because of their lives and the work that they did and what they shared with the world, we can now say role model. I see them. I like what they did. I want to do it. And they can support us in our journey. Their work can reveal our our adventure and our discovering of our purpose. So when I say there's a reason, I don't mean that there's an excuse or that there's a judgment-based result from something we did or didn't do. Do you hear that? It's different. What I mean is that there is a soul-level purpose for everything that happens in our lives, and we have the opportunity to learn from it or run from it, to share it, to crumble under it, or to rise through it like the phoenix. I found this awesome quote, and it surprised me and made me really happy. But it's Marilyn Monroe, and she says, I believe that everything happens for a reason. People change so that you can learn to let go. Things go wrong so that you can appreciate when they're right. You believe lies, so you eventually learn to trust no one but yourself. And sometimes good things fall apart, so better things can fall together. I had no idea she had that kind of insight and wisdom, and it's thrilling to me to find this out. And if anybody finds out that this quote is not attributed to her, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Reverend Linda Kajawara shared with me one time that um, one of her kids came to her and was like whining and I don't like what's going on and I don't like my life. And she looked at him and she said, well, creator, if you don't like what you created, create something new. (laughs) I love that. It's a powerful and empowering message. And when we're strong enough to hear that, it's great. So now, what about the times when we're not strong enough? What about the times when we're not strong enough to hear that? What about those moments, and I'm guessing many people in this room have had them, when we're truly questioning our very reason for being? And I wish I had an easy answer for this. I sat with that question for days. I searched books. I searched the internet. I was looking for resources that could give me some pithy or affirmative statement that would make it all okay. And after days of this, what I came, what came through was trust. And then I found this quote from Paulo Coelho, who wrote The Alchemist and The Pilgrimage and many other books. And he said, there are moments when troubles enter our lives and we can do nothing to avoid them, but they are there for a reason. Only when we have overcome them will we understand why we were there, why they were there. And I started looking around me outside, and I looked at every tree and leaf and blade of grass, and the clouds, and how they move. And then I listened to my own heartbeat, and I felt my breath go in and out. I can only trust that something larger than me, by whatever name we want to call it, created me for a reason created each of us, all of you, for a reason. Just like everything around me, every natural thing created 
has a purpose. And so must I. And I sat with that for a really long time. Because it's true. Things happen and we say, I don't get it. And for those of us who do feel a connection to something larger than us, that thing is saying, trust me. I didn't put you here to suffer. I didn't put you here to be miserable. I didn't bring forth life for it to suffer. And so then I found this. We are here on earth to grow our souls, to open wider, to reach higher, and to stretch further. Our goal is to soften where we would normally constrict, to loosen when we would habitually tighten, and to extend where we would usually hold back. Each and every one of us has so much to offer. And hear this last sentence. And the world needs what we have to give. So many of the songs that Spirit has written through me, I noticed, have dealt with this idea that there's a purpose I'm living out. That there's guidance that I'm supposed to be listening to if I choose to, and it tells me where to step next. That there is a larger reason that I'm here. Some nights are dark and long, and there is a valley that we move through. And today, I pray as much for myself as I pray for each and every person here, as I pray for my friends who are struggling, as I pray for each person who's connected to me, reaching out, trying to hear that voice, trying to change what's been, trying to expand, trying to make that step to say, yes, there is a reason for me. I want to know what it is. I want to live it. I want to be it. Today I pray and know I speak from a place of having experienced it and from a place of longing to experience it again. That voice of God that says I'm shining the light on it. Go this way. It's right there. And so as I wait patiently, as I hold those in love patiently, as we all breathe each day patiently, ready, open, and willing, I claim that that light brightens up, comes on like a floodlight, and that we are ready that we are ready to say yes. That whatever this path, wherever this path takes me, whatever this path holds, yes. Yes. That sometimes this path is going to confuse me and shake me up. I say yes. That sometimes this path will make absolutely no sense. And I'll want to throw my hands up and say, why? And instead, I'll throw my hands up and say, yes. Yes, God. Yes, Spirit. Yes, Beloved. Yes, Universe. Bring it. Because I'm here for a reason. And I'm ready to live it. I'm ready to live that purpose. I'm ready to cultivate that seven-year-old on the playground and say yes to those dreams. I'm ready to face what's coming at me and say, yes, I can do it. I can overcome it. I can go through it. I can rise like the phoenix.
We've all done it before. We can all do it again and again and again and again. And when we are in those moments where we're rising, that's when we can know for our fellow travelers, our companions on the walk, we can know for them, you can do it. I got here, I'll shine the light back so you can see where I'm at. Just follow the light. We can all do this for each other. We do it all the time. We can do it more. We can change the world like this. And so whatever it is, whatever it is, I invite you today to be courageous. I invite you today to be courageous and say yes to all of it. The full experience. Holding that feeling, holding that sensation. I invite you today to earnestly give that stone what it needs to take. We just don't need to carry it anymore. So grateful. So grateful to know that. So grateful to get yet another breath, another opportunity to say yes. I let that be. Ashe, amen. Ashe.